Hi, I'm Courtney. And I'm Shane. And we're very awkward. We're very awkward. Yes. And today we're going to talk about how we've always been awkward. Mm -hmm. Because we're pulling the uh, the time back. Taking it real far Taking back. Taking it uh, far back. And we're going to talk about the unrequited loves that got away. Yeah. The people that we had crushes on who never had crushes on us. Nope. Uh, no matter what we did, mm -mm. no matter how hard we tried, mm -mm. no matter what we expressed, it just didn't, nothing, nothing came of it. Heartbroken. <laughs> All right, we have to have stories. Don't cry now. <laughs> Save it. Save okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, Courtney's like, up first. Yeah, I'm gonna go first. This was in 2009. Ooh, okay. Good year. I was a freshman. You wanna see what I looked Whoa. like? Okay. I had emo hair. Crazy. A little bit in the back. Cool. I wore the same hood all the time. I was such a little emo girl, dude. Such an emo girl. That's just any of the All American rejects. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I That's... wore I wore eyeliner only on the bottom, no mascara, nothing on the top. Like, what was I doing? Whoa, oh, Pete God. Wentz. <laughs> I'll tell you what I was doing. I was fawning over this guy. We're gonna call him Daniel. Daniel. Yes. And obviously, we've heard a lot about a guy named Johnny, Johnny. from Courtney's diary uh, entry videos. Yes, but that's a full story for another day. But... Daniel was the first guy that I ever went from calling a guy cute to calling them hot. What? He wasn't cute. He was oh my hot. God. Hot. God. Feelings are like new and evolving and adultifying. So he was in my art class. He was a couple years older than me, uh, and he was just classic jock. Okay, like faux hawk situation. <laughs> like that's just alfalfa. Up. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. And when he got really excited, his hair would go. Bing! It You're was making so me hot. nervous. Oh. Okay, straight up, just like <laughs> smirk and a little nose there, and he was like, Bleh. "You're telling me he had a mouth and a nose?" <laughs> Stop. And he was like a buff, and he was like, "Whoa, dude, yo, so buff, dude." Hold on. I don't know which season of The Bachelor this is, and I feel like it's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then he had like those eyes, you know, that were like, yeah, that's right. I know you're in. He was this. constantly just like. Yeah. He was in my art class and I would stare at him drawing recreations of al album covers in my sketchbook of emo songs that I listen to all the time. Here's the thing, I legitimately had a staring problem. Like I, but I wasn't aware of it. I was like, ah, that guy's looking at me. Didn't realize it was because I was constantly looking at him the entire time. Um, but yeah, and he like, he knew, you know, he could tell that I was just like, oh. And then a year later, all right, 2010. 2010. All I could ever do in that year was just stare at him. But you know, look at me. I was a sad little mop head. And that's it. But 2010 rolls around. Uh oh. Courtney gets hot. She glows up a little bit, just a little bit. She's happy now. Uh, and I started, you know, the new crowd. And then one night, and like literally this guy ignored me up until this point. I would do whatever I can. You know, when you like do something as if everyone was watching, like even driving, you're like. <laughs> like, so I'd be going up and sharpening the pencil and being like. <laughs> like just hoping that he would like might catch a, a glimpse at whatever this was. <laughs> but he was such a douche though. He was disrespectful to people, but I was like. So in. hot. <laughs> um, Wait, was he good at art? No. Oh. It was beginner's art. He was like, hey Courtney, I did a self portrait. Uh, what do you think? I worked really hard on it. Do you think it's, do you think it's good? <laughs> I, worked, I spent two days on this. Uh, okay, so sophomore year rolls around. And then one weekend, my, my dad is not home for the whole weekend. And my friends were like, you have to throw a party. You have to. And I was like, what? And they're like, yep. Everybody come to Courtney's house this weekend. I was like, what? but I'm just a kid. Party happens, and... <laughs> well, the party happens. The party happens, there's balloons and stuff. <laughs> okay, what kind of party what did you throw? <laughs> no, I don't know, I know. it's very last second. Crazy but... party, so I got a pinata. There's red cups, you know. Oh, red solo cups. Red solo cups, 
and uh, turns out the seniors were coming. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> they oh, showed no. up, and you know, I w watched him all night. <laughs> watched him all night. I was wearing. I was wearing. Who threw this party? Her. <laughs> I was wearing these boots that I thought were so cool. They were like knee-high heel boots. Like definitely did not match with my red and black <laughs> flannel that was up here. And so he's freaking there, right? He's got his red Hulk solo cup just hovering next to him because he's magical like that. And uh, perfectly balancing it on yeah, his shoulder. On his massive shoulder muscle. <laughs> I was dying. I could not believe he was in my house. I remember seeing them walk in and I ran into my bedroom and I was like, I don't get it. Daniel's here! I almost said his real name. And wouldn't you know it, he ends up being one of the last guests at my place. And next thing you know, he's sitting next to me on my couch. And then the next thing you know, he kissed me. Wait, what? Yeah. I was very shocked after he, he, we kissed and then he left. And I was like, what? He knew who I was? Was it just because I was cool because I had a party? Was that it? Was it only because I got hot over the summer? I don't know. Um, and I was like, oh my God, this could be the start of something. This is amazing. Then winter break, it, this is all during winter break, by the way. Winter break happens, come back. He acts like I don't exist. I do not exist. We even did a sport together. We literally ran. You next know to this guy loves the sport. <laughs> Yo, his his nipples had muscles, bro. Like they were, like he was a tank. He did multiple sports. It's very graphic. Yeah, that's a lot. Found out that he had a girlfriend that went to another school, also, but like literally didn't barely spoke to me ever again. Just... Um, well, I mean, then years later, I see him out of high school, and then he's like, he's like one of those like beer gut, peaked in high school Ooh. types at like some random party. So, okay, I wanted I it to it. be more, I got it. but it wasn't more. It wasn't more. I know, but I did get a little lucky. You got something. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, most of my life is the tales of stories like this. Uh, I was a very lonely person throughout most of my teenage years, but that began in roughly seventh grade was when I first started to be like, you know, in elementary school you have crushes, but then in seventh grade was the first time I was ever like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> uh, So from second to uh, sixth grade, uh, we were at a, a school that taught kindergarten to eighth grade, right? So you were in the same Thanks place school. that whole time. I, the school was built when I was in second grade, so that's when I started. And it was the same students in this whole school for most of my elementary school time. So, sure, I had crushes on a couple of my classmates, like little silly crushes. But then in seventh grade, we got an influx of a bunch of new students. There was this girl who joined our, uh, who joined the school. She was in my band class. I played alto saxophone, ladies. Oh my god. <laughs> And uh, I believe she played saxophone as well. <gasps> Did you guys like touch sax? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a really funny joke for people who aren't in band <laughs> and know how serious saxophone is. <laughs> um, uh, but she was in my band class. She was also in uh, science class in the final period of, of class. So let's call her Beverly. And man, mm. the first time I saw Beverly, I was just like, oh, uh, she was so, so cute. Like, and it's very like. What did you look like? So I looked sort of like this. Hold on one sec. Good green. Oh, big head, okay. <laughs> oh my God. I had spiky hair, he put in that depth. Uh, one second. Aww. So that's a little what I look like. Uh, uh, I, don't think I had it's my saxophone. Um, I was just awkward. I had spiky blonde hair. Um, uh, I was probably wearing a, a hand-me-down Abercrombie and Fitch shirt from one of my brothers. And uh, yeah, I was very awkward. I was a very awkward kid in seventh grade. Um, uh, was just still trying to like build up my humor, trying to be funny. Wow. But it wasn't good. So I, I definitely, back in, this was still in the time where I would say jokes 
like here, I would just yell crazy shit out, but it was often met with just, what? <laughs> just not, not. That would, still, still happens. Um, Beverly was like, she was blonde, blue eyed, like very stereotypical, right? But I just was like, oh my God, she's so cute. So freaking cute. Mm. And I immediately, it was the first time in my life where I was like, actively trying to talk to someone. You yeah. know, normally, normally I would just have a crush on a girl and just be like, I have a crush on her, but I'm never gonna talk to her. Yeah. I'm gonna go about my life as normal and just, her. and just hope that someday a magical being <laughs> brings us together. Uh, Were you like, oh my God, she plays sax too. That's why I love her. Uh, no, no. I mean, it was more that I was like, what a crazy coincidence. Aww. We're both, we both have science class and band class together. It must be fate. But I would often just be like, trying to like say jokes to her or something like, and they were just so bad. And, but she was such a nice person that she was often, she was laughing so much at my jokes that I was like, oh my God. She's like, Haha, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. Ah, uh, no. Oh. She was a genuine, looking back, she was a genuinely sweet person. So I think she was laughing at my jokes and she was like, eh, yeah, like this guy's being nice. And I was, I was trying to flirt, but my flirting was just being nice and mm. being funny. Mm. And uh, so over the months, it was just still like, it just never really progressed anywhere because all I was doing was just being nice and funny to her in our classes together. And I would often like, before class, like if she was waiting outside of class, I'd be like, oh, what's up, Beverly? Oh, cool. So. Class soon, huh? Oh, Crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, what's, what's up with science? You know, science is so dumb. <laughs> like, I would just, I don't know what my jokes were, but they were bad. And, uh. Oh, man, I wish you remembered one. I don't think I do. Was it like ones that you'd read elsewhere? Or was it like, was it like one line? I think I probably would slip into like bad impressions, be like, wow, it's science. <laughs> Can't wait for science. Oh, my God. Christopher Walken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> I did not fail that test. Bill Clinton. I hate What's this. up? And <laughs> Beverly would be like, oh, it's awesome. Um, but, and then looking back, or even at the time, then like, guys like this would walk by, <laughs> and she'd be like, hey Mark, what's up? Like, and it would just be so in and I'd be like, Cool. Like, oh sing. no! Uh, all right, yeah, cool. But I never was mad about that. I think I was always just like bummed. I was always just like, oh yeah, no, there's no chance. There's no chance. My, but one of these days I'm gonna say a joke funny enough. Oh. <laughs> so there eventually came a time, and this is the this is one of like the most like distinct memories of just like remembering what's important in life. Uh, there was wow. a time in science class. Uh, another one of the an, another person who would played saxophone with me since fourth grade was one of my best friends, we'll call her uh, Allie. And Allie was literally one of my best friends. We we were so close, we could talk about anything. Um, she kind of knew, like she kind of could see how I was. And she mm -hmm. would just be like, oh my God, like, what? why are you fawning over this girl that is not paying attention to you at all? Um, and uh, there came a time in science class where I had, we had to pick we were gonna go split into groups of three to work on this project for like for like a couple months. Whoa. And so it, I was the last person in the class who wasn't in a group. There was a group with with Beverly and another person and Allie and another person. And it was like, you gotta choose. And I'm like, I have to choose between one of my best friends or this girl that I have a massive crush on. Oh, and I, I played dumb and, and Allie looked at me and she was just like, she knew, uh, she knew what I was gonna like, do. And I, I did this whole thing, I was like, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I guess I'll go with oh, Beverly, no. like whatever. And like looking back, I'm just like, son of a bitch. Do you think it was obvious because to her? because because looking back, Beverly and I had nothing in common. Saxophone though. Oh, so <laughs> played saxophone. <laughs> if only I could meet someone who played saxophone. Uh, <laughs> looking back, I'm just like, oh, it was just me desperately trying to make this person laugh. Who would laugh? But like, we weren't actually. There was nothing there. So I felt bad. I, I look back and I'm like, I could have had so much more fun had I gone to the group with my friend and we actually mm -hmm. hung out. Basically this whole process continued for a year of me trying desperately to make this person like me. Mm -hmm. Even though I was never gonna have the guts to ask her out or say anything, I was just trying to charm her mm -hmm. endlessly to no avail. And then eventually it was over summer break that a friend of mine, uh, we'll call him Carter, uh, my friend from Texas, 
Uh, awesome dude, but the most Texas person I've ever known <laughs> in my entire life. He, I think he went to the same church as her or something, but he was like, yeah, I, uh, I go to the same church if you wanted like, I could like say something to her or something. And that was the only time where I was finally just like, yeah, just like ask if maybe like, I don't know, she like, thinks I'm oh cute or something, God. you could ask. And and then like I saw him the next day and he's just like, yeah, she said no. And I was just like, yeah, oh. cool, cool. Um, so yeah, I don't think Beverly ever assumed I actually liked her. I don't think she, I, I don't think I was ever in her radar. She just thought you were just a friend. I think I was just like a sweet little guy. <laughs> so this was essentially my first crush and also my first friend zone. And, Ooh. but I, I think the point I wanted to make and why I wanted to bring it up is because I think the friend zone is complete bull It is. It doesn't really exist. No. And uh, I don't know, for one it's dumb because I never, it took me forever to even tell her that I liked mm -hmm. her. So it's very easy for her to probably have not assumed. Yeah, I don't anything. even think, cause like maybe you weren't like officially friend zone because like, I mean not until the very end, right. but. But yeah. Right, but even being friend zoned is not something to get upset about because I'm like, that's someone who views you as a friend and if mm -hmm. you don't like that, then then you're not their friend and you should stop being their friend and it's you're only being nice to them for shallow reasons. Nice. Did I get it? We've got a lot of flies around here. Yeah. Uh, we have like four dead bodies we're just trying to save for a rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have something that kind of ties these together. Okay. Because it's interesting. Uh, this was an unrequited crush story for a long time. This was a like, crush for a long time. This is what happens when you, nothing happens. You, like, you, it never happened and it was like, kind of sad or whatever. Even when, you, when what you want to happen does happen, it's not always what you amounted up to be in your head. This person that you're expecting is the perfect person. Like, you don't wanna, don't get too hung up on somebody, you know? No, I mean, uh, it's not worth it. Especially when you're, if you're young watching this, I'm telling you, man, like things change. And uh, I feel like friend zoning doesn't happen as much, you know, I'm 28 now. I feel like it doesn't happen as much now because, for one, hopefully as you get older, you will be better at uh, be, being honest with people and, 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 and communicating feelings. and also just like reading people better. But also I think people are just more blunt in an older age and- uh, Or just slide in the DMs right away yeah, and but, the answer's but, there. But also like if someone's not interested in you in that way, like then you don't want to be with that person. You don't ever want to be with someone who doesn't feel that way. Yeah. It's a, that's a waste of time. Because I know so many guys nowadays are thinking, oh, girls only go for guys like this and whatever. It's just not true. Mm. You're going to meet the right person eventually. Focus, like, there's so much to life on your own. There's so much you have to work on. And the irony is that being able to handle rejection shows so much confidence and that in itself is attractive. Mm -hmm. Not being able to handle rejection is making you less attractive. And also... Rose-colored glasses, dude. Also, yeah, because looking back, looking back at Beverly, I'm like, you know, not, not dissing her or anything. Basic. But I'm just like, I'm like, oh, it wasn't... I've I've dated people just as amazing and like the, you're gonna date so many different types of mm -hmm. people over the years if you keep your mind open as well and also you might have been a Beverly at some point and you'd Ooh, never know you true. would never know you would just not know so you'd think ah oh, nobody likes me and stuff but someone might, I was a Beverly I'm or or lie. has like I definitely was a Beverly a couple times it happens you know I think it's more common than you guys think and every single person finds something else attractive. Everyone's a Beverly to someone in some way mm -hmm. for some reason that they wouldn't think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you play the saxophone, hit him up. He's looking. My saxophone got stolen out of my car a couple oh, years ago. Oh, that's right! But Your saxophone was stolen <laughs> My like saxophone recently. was stolen. <laughs> That you had I since had it in then? my trunk. I had it in my trunk of my car for Man, years. If you I wasn't picked one up, play it. If you picked one up right now, would you be able to play something? I don't know. I was never that good. <laughs> Come on. I was never that good. That's, That's the unrequited love, me and my saxophone. <laughs> That's what the real story is about. How my saxophone got away. Oh no. Uh, anyways. Guys, if you have similar stories that you have an unrequited love story, or if were you a Beverly, let us know in the comments. It will be reading like crazy. Were you a Beverly or what was your Beverly that you chased after? Yeah. Who was the Moby Dick to your Ahab of dating? <laughs> and did you have a Daniel? And how spicy was he? Yeah. Let us know. Did his nipples have muscles? Because mine did. 
<laughs> uh, make sure to hit that bell, guys, as well. Yeah, there's hit that, a bell. Hit that bell, and also click this video over here. We selected it for you. It's uh, very spicy. Very spicy. It's basically the best video on the internet. It was rated that it's way. It's the Daniel and, videos. And YouTube, YouTube picked out a video for you. Over here, it's the it's, Beverly of videos. It's somehow Ooh. the best video also wow. ever picked. What did Beverly look like? I can't draw.